ready personnel. Dino. What's Tom's, man? It's Tom's. All right, that'll work. You can hear me, right? Dino unplugged. My glasses, you know what I mean? Hey, I, how you doing, everybody? I you doing? Back the store, you know what I mean? Hey, yo, Bubba, you know what I'm talking about? I asked Timmy, I said, Timmy, what, what store are we going to start up? I mean, the Nistico family was like, they, I was like an adopted brother, son to, 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 to everybody here. And they were, everybody at the restaurant, we were all like brothers and cousins. It was great. But, um, I said to Timmy, I said, Timmy, what story are we going to start off with? And he goes, why don't you tell him a story about when Tommy gave you the note to get out of school? <laughs> now, who gets a note from their boss when they're in high school? I was a junior in high school. They get out of, they get out of school at like 12 o'clock to go drinking for 14 hours. <laughs> now... We did a lot of stuff that night, but I went to see the Ollie Norton fight at Yankee Stadium, September 15, 1976. And we had dinner at this place, Kay's Place. I don't know, you guys probably know what I'm talking about, but anyway. Um, so, uh, and I never ate in New York City before. It was my first time. So, so anyway, we get out, we, I get out of school, I get the note, no problem. I get out of school and uh, I go to the Arrow. So we go down the Arrow, we're hanging out. And uh, we're going, where are we going? Come on, let's get in the car. And there's like five, three Cadillacs, a couple of, a couple of limos. We get in the cars, we start driving, and we, we get on the highway, exit 17, and we get off at exit 16. I go, what are we doing? We're going to the lighthouse, come on. So we go to the lighthouse. We gotta go see my father, say goodbye. We tell him we're going to see the Ali Norton fight. So we go in there, and he goes, uh, he goes, do me, Dino, do me! Ah, the hell are you, goddammit? Dickie, where are you? Dickie, I really forget the time Dickie was driving a car. I said, Dickie, if you don't slow down, you're not getting your license till you, when you turn 16. <laughs> so anyway, he's going, you gotta imitate me, Dino. I said, no, you gotta give me, I gotta have a shot or something. Give him a shot, give him a shot. I'm 16 years old. I'm drinking shots of Jack Daniels at 1.30 in the afternoon at the lighthouse in Norwalk. Now, Randy Vidal was looking at his watch, and he goes, you better pace yourself, kid. You got about 15 hours to go. <laughs> no problem. So now we get back on the highway. We get off at exit 15. I go, what are we doing? Well, we got to go to battle the, the, the Battleinos. It's now Donovan's or whatever it is down in South Norway. We had to go in there to get in the fight mood because there was old pictures of old fighters. Now I'm going, now I'm starting to see a little funny already. It's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The fight's, I think, at like 12 o'clock that night at Yankee yeah, Stadium. Anyway, long story short, we had a great time. We went down. We saw the Ali Nort fight. Me and Tommy. Tommy snuck us down on the field, right? For $10. I think it was me, Louie, and Tommy. For $10 each, we got snuck on the field. We were in the Yankee dugout. We were in the Yankee dugout, and we ran out of the ring. With, we ran out of the Yankee dugout with Kenny Norton. Patted him on the back, and we ran out like we were in his entourage. Pushing and shoving people out of the way. Good on, Kenny Norton's coming through. Now the guy was, now we rooted for Kenny Norton. Well, that's what suckers we were, right? What was the black guy say? Show all the suckers, Muhammad. Show all the suckers. And he was right. Ali won the fight. So uh, now the other time, I'm, I'm talking mostly now. A lot of this stuff is like the, the arrow stuff. I mean, that's, uh, people said a lot of nice things tonight, and... And I agree wholeheartedly with that. I mean, completely. That's the way it was growing up. I mean, the, the, Nisco, the Arrow was like a staple. It was like a pillar of Westport and Saugatuck. But, but, so, but I'm telling you the extracurricular stories because they're, they're a lot of fun. <laughs> so now we go down. I got to get another note from Tommy. Now I'm 17. I think I'm a junior in high school now. <laughs> we're going down to see... Uh, we're going down to the restaurant show. Oh, okay, that's where we're going. We're going to the restaurant show. Well, it was election day, I think. Wasn't it election, election day? You couldn't, they had to shut down the restaurant. You couldn't serve booze in Connecticut. So I figured we shut the restaurant down and we go down to the city. So we go down there and we're in the pen and pencil in New York City. Fancy place. 
Now these are the these are the players I remember that were there. It was Tommy Cheech and Louie, uh, Randy Vidal. There was eleven of us because I remember there were eleven shots. There was Bugsy Siegel, Ben Siegel, I think his name was, who owned the pharmacy. Thank God for him. Danny Siegel owned a pharmacy down in huh? Billy Fretwell. Billy Fretwell. No, but Cal Neff was there, and Cal Neff saved my life this night. So anyway, here I am. I'm a junior in high school. I'm like, now I'm 17. And I'm down with all these guys. And, and I go, uh, let's do some shots before dinner. Cheech, what do you think? We'll do shots. Yeah, let's do shots. I go, let's do shots at 151. And they're like, well, the kid's challenger. We got we go, okay, 151. Flaming. So I go, okay. So now the shots, 11 shots, I remember. The bar tray came over. I lit about three or four of the shots with my lighter. And then I grabbed one before anybody. And just drank it. Now, I didn't know you were supposed to blow the thing out. <laughs> <laughs> the flames are burning my eyebrows. <laughs> the, 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 like we're going to the fights at the garden that night. The, the flames are burning. My face is burning. Cal Neff reaches across the table and puts me out. I don't remember that part. I go into the bathroom, I turn the cold water on, and my skin just melts off my chin. <laughs> Tommy comes in like he saw a ghost. He goes, D, you okay? I go, hey, hey, I'm all right. He goes, uh, I go, what do you want? I go, what do you want me to go home? Oh, you want a train ticket? I'll give you a train ticket. You go right home. I said, no, I want to go see the fights. Come on. All right, let's go. So, so we have, now we have, we're going to have dinner at the Pen and Pencil. Now, this is a very fancy, very fancy restaurant. Well, Larry Cotty was there, too. That's right, Larry was there. There was 11 of us, I don't remember. But anyway, we're, we're, we're at this nice, fancy restaurant, and they figure, okay, now these guys are nuts. The kid just lit himself on fire. <laughs> There's no way. We're not, let's just hold the food back, and maybe they'll just get, get so drunk, they'll just want to leave. Well, now Tommy cheats. Me. We're going, where's our food? They're, well, they're holding it back, because they think we're just going to lose interest and take off. Well, that's not going to happen. Tommy, where's our food? Where'd Cal go? Where's Cal, right? Cal's in the kitchen. He's got the three chefs against the wall with a cleaver. You better get our food out to the table out there. Well, needless to say, we had a nice dinner with me, and we went to the fights. We get to the fights. We're at, we're at Madison Square Garden. It was Bobby Halpern, right, who'd been in jail for like 17 years. That guy got shot, and he lived because he had to done so many sit-ups and push-ups, right? That his stomach must have stopped the bullet. But anyway, he's he's... He gets knocked out. So now I'm like, we're all dressed up nice. So I go, you know what, let me sneak in. I sneak under the stands and I get into the dressing rooms. So now I'm going, oh yeah, where's my Uncle Bobby? Like I'm pretending like I'm related to him. Tommy, Louie, right? And we snuck into Rocky Casale's locker room. Now we're in there talking to Rocky Casale who knocked out Halpern that night. And I'm going, hey, Rock, can I get some of that Vaseline? I want to put it on my chin. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Look, I got a rougher night than I did, kid, you know? So now I'm like, hey, Rock, when you hit him with that punch, you think you're going to knock him out? Next thing you know, you got the ABC News. He's got the mic to me, the mic to Rocky. What happened to this kid? Where you, were you in the car tonight? <laughs> did you, who'd you fight? <laughs> I said a flaming shot of 151. <laughs> That's the flaming shot story. What else, Timmy? Oh, how about Treetop Airways? Treetop Airways? Uh, the Roberto Duran? We go up to see the Roberto Duran's training to fight Sugar Ray Leonard, the first fight, when he beat Sugar Ray, Brawl of Montreal. My birthday was the same as Frank's, June 4th, right? Frank and I had the same birthday, June 4th. It's June 5th. Tommy talks Johnny D into working for me the next day. I'm so hungover, I would have been useless in the kitchen anyway. And he says, come on, we're going to go up and see Duran, train at Grossinger's. Louie's going to fly the plane. Well, we had about, what, five guys in a plane? The plane's only supposed to fly four. Oh, we had six, okay. We're only supposed to fly five. Anyway, we just barely made it over the trees. But we land, we land at, this, at this airstrip in Monticello, New York, right? It was like a drug drop-off or something. There's a hangar, a motorcycle, and, this, and a dirt bike, and a, and, a, and a Jeep in the hangar, right? And a trailer for the, like the office. No tower, nothing like that. Louis lands a plane, nice, nice, we land. Where is everybody? Tommy goes, 
I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> D, watch the door. There's a dead rat on the door. Remember the dead rat on the steps going up to the door? <laughs> Tommy, we go in and look like a bomb hit this trailer. The place is like a trailer, right? Remember? There's clothes, food everywhere. Tommy goes, just watch, I'm gonna go into the bathroom. He's in there for like 20 minutes. He's in there, Tommy. And I'm watching, I'm standing there like, yeah, okay, he's gonna mess with us. Yeah, right. Well, they used to say we got out of there, we went there. I was so hung over that day. I, barely, I can't believe we flew. We're trying to find a place to eat. We couldn't eat anywhere, remember? No, they couldn't get a pork chop anywhere. Oh. They, 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 they Grossinger's, the sing, sing as we went through. So now we're going to take off. Tommy, every time he flew, he was always... He probably got in the plane. Oh, And Tommy... We just made it over to treetops. Just made it. I think the branches were hit the plane, right? We, got a, we brought a piece back with us. So Tommy, ever since then, treetop airways, right? I got to ask some ZD. Where's the ZD? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I lived in the back here when we first built when we first built the Red Barn. I came. Frank headhunted me. You know they had headhunters back then. <laughs> Get in the back of the car. I want to talk to you. <laughs> what the hell are you doing working at the Roses? <laughs> well, I just came back from Maine. I said, Frank, I want to try something, to do a different kitchen, just to steal some ideas, learn maybe someday I'll have my place of my own. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm buying. I'm buying a Red Barn. You're coming back to work for me. Well, that's what I did. I came back here, and we were working on a restaurant. I used to live next door. My wife, in fact, my first son was born in that house. We spent our first anniversary in this in the Giovanni room, so my wife could run across the lawn so she could nurse the baby because he was only a week old. <laughs> That's the truth. So anyway, so now my father has his house across town, and he's his tenants moving out, so he's offered me to move to the place. So I said to Frank. Frank, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move, and Louis was gonna build a house back there, so they were gonna knock that down, the shack I lived in, and make a nice house, which is there now. So Louis tells me, yeah, well, you know, I'm probably building a house, but I said, okay. So I, I'm gonna move, so I said to Frank, look, I'm moving, I'm gonna move out. What do you mean you're moving? I, go, I gotta move out, I'm gonna move out, I'm gonna move, you know, my dad's house. You guys are building, he goes, okay. But we're not, not, we're not building right away, so I'm gonna have to rent it out. So he goes, how much was the, uh, I got to, what am I charging these people for? He, he was charging me a certain amount, plus I worked here. And he didn't know what to charge, the, you know, the new tenants. These are, there are a bunch of kids that moved in. So he says to me, well, what's the electric bill over there? I said, the electric bill, the power line goes from the restaurant to the bar. There's no electric bill. Well, what do you mean there's no electric Well, there's no electric bill. I just... I just pay you the rent. Then he says, well, what about the water bill? Well, the water, remember he put that new pipe in the ground when AJ was building the place? It goes right to the, the, it goes right to the rest of the house there. There's no water bill either. Well, no, I'm sorry, Frank. So, uh, well, that's okay. All right, so what kind of heat you got? I go, electric heat. Electric heat! <laughs> So anyway, that was the end of that, but that was a nice, nice, nice deal I had over there. 